Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking about the tweezer dexterity test. So just some basics. Um, the type of assessment for this is a functional performance test and it's used to assess hand function and dexterity. So the test itself, uh, it's kind of what you'd expect. It's a board made up of 100 little holes and there's a section at the top for small pins. You will use a piece of tweezers and pick up the pins one by one and place them in the holes. This takes around 10 to 15 minutes to administer, um, but obviously this is going to depend on the speed of the person that you're testing. And this is standardized to be used with individuals 14 years and older. Here's just some pictures. Uh, on the left is the assessment itself. It's small, portable, um, and on the right, I included a picture of the tweezers, and I just did that to show that you can't just use any pair of tweezers that you have lying around your house for this assessment. There's a certain pair that you have to use. Okay, so the purpose of this assessment. So from all my research and the original purpose of this assessment, it's used widely for vocational purposes. So a low score indicates an aptitude towards certain careers. And what I mean by low score is a faster score. So a low score would be better and a high score would be worse. So some careers that um, require that fine level of dexterity that this test tests. So like a surgeon, a dentist, a lab worker, jewelry maker, anything with crafts, stuff like that. Um, so one of the articles I found had to do with dental students. And they had these dental students take the test, the dexterity test, before they took a clinical skills course and they had their professors rate them. And they found that the dental students that did better on the dexterity test before even learning any clinical skills ended up doing better in the clinical skills course and their professors rated them higher. Um, so, Next, this could also measure functional capabilities of those with hand injuries. So this is definitely more in the realm of OT. Um, so a high score, and by that I mean a slower score, could allow for workplace accommodations. So for my second study, I read about a group of 12 individuals with normal hand function, but then they also had around with simulated finger disabilities. I think they had like four fingers amputated and they took the dexterity test. And from what you'd expect, um, they actually did worse when they had the finger disability. Uh, I think they did like 190% slower when they had the fingers amputated, the simulation of fingers amputated. Uh, so, that just goes to show that therapists could use this test and say, okay, here is this data, and from this data, we'll send it to the workplace, and they could get more accommodations and things like that. Uh, so OTs mostly would not use this test for its original intended purpose. You know, we might care that how fast this person could do the assessment, but more likely, if we're using this with a client, we'd be looking at other skills that the assessment tests. And I won't get any more into that because that is my discussion post. Scoring, scoring for this is very simple. Uh, your score just equals the number of seconds between the placements of the first and last pins. Uh, I would be careful about this. I actually messed this up in my example assessment. I started timing before the placement of the first pin, but just make sure that the timer starts as the pin is going in. Um, so for example, uh, my roommate Meg's score was eight minutes and 39 seconds. So that would equal a score of 519. And here I'm going to insert an example of Meg, the Today you're gonna to be taking the tweezer dexterity test. This is just gonna show me um, the dexterity ability in your, um, in your hand and see, um, it's usually used to show like how good you are at like manual labor tasks, okay. stuff like that. So um, today you will be using these tweezers and you're going to be picking pins out of here and placing them in the holes. So um, it's easiest to do this if you pick up the pin by the farthest end from you 
and you're gonna try to pick it up lightly because if you pick it up lightly, it'll fall right into that vertical position to put it into the hole. If you pick it up too tight, as you can see, it's just kind of staying in that horizontal. So use a light touch oh. and it'll be a lot easier for you. So I'm gonna pick the pin up from the farthest end, holding it really lightly. And I'm going to put it in this farthest corner right over here, if I can do it. It's a little tricky. So nice and light and right in there. And I am going to work down like this. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you um, 10 holes so you can do some practice and get the hang of it before you start the actual okay. test. Okay, Meg, so for your practice round, um, it's gonna be easiest if you start at the farthest corner from you so that your sleeve isn't knocking all the pins over as you do it. So um, I'm gonna have you start in this farthest upper corner from you and you're gonna work and just fill out that top row for your okay. practice, okay? Any questions? Nope. Okay, you can begin. Okay, so Meg just finished her practice. Um, she filled in 10 holes, the first top row, um, no more, no less. And we are gonna move on to the actual timed test. So now you're gonna work um, left to right. So this is so that your sleeve isn't knocking over the pins as you're going. So you're okay. gonna start at this row and go down that row closest to you and you're just gonna work like that. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Do you have any questions? No. Okay, you can begin now. Meg has completed the test. She put all um, 100 pins into the holes. Um, her final time was eight minutes and 39 seconds. Um, the score for this is just in seconds. So um, that would be a score of 519. Good job. Thank you. Okay, next for psychometrics. Um, unfortunately, it was very hard for me to find any psychometric data for this assessment. Uh, the norms that you see here are actually from when the original assessment was created, which was the year 1926. So just keep in mind as you're reading this data that it is extremely old and outdated, but unfortunately I could not find anything more recent. So as you can see here, the men scored faster than the women, um, which is pretty interesting. Um, and here is a more consolidated chart just for scoring purposes. So if a woman scored a 300, then they would be in the 69.2 to 93.3 percentile range. Um, like you saw earlier, Meg scored a 519, um, meaning that she scored very low compared to these norms. Like I mentioned, unfortunately, I was not able to find any data regarding the reliability and validity, which just kind of goes to show how old this assessment is and there's not really a demand to get this information. So potential biases. So as I mentioned earlier, those that have more experience with fine tool use are most likely going to score better. So your doctors, your lab workers, um, your craft makers, things like that. Uh, cultural considerations, two things that I thought of maybe those from Asian cultures, they're using chopsticks a lot of the time, so they might do better on this kind of assessment compared to Americans or Europeans. Um, another thing, um, America greatly values beauty and, you know, cosmetics, so I was thinking that maybe Americans would do better on this assessment particularly American women, because we are always using tweezers to pluck our eyebrows, um, using fine finger dexterity for things like makeup. Uh, so that's something to think about. Gender differences, this is pretty interesting. Uh, as we saw in the early norms, men did better on this assessment, but in the article that I'm about to talk about, women actually did much better. So I think that's interesting and more research definitely needs to be done. 
Okay, anxiety during assessment. So what I would think is that if somebody is more anxious before the assessment begins, um, they might do worse on the assessment. Um, and this study that I'm about to talk about kind of wanted to explore that. So they had a group of surgical students and they rated their anxiety before taking the test and they wanted to see if that would impact their score. Um, however, they actually found that their level of anxiety did not impact their score, which is the opposite of what I would think. So I thought that was really interesting and uh, more research probably should be done in that area of anxiety and these kind of assessments. Um, and that's it. Thank you for watching and here are my references.